Hey guys, Lila Higgins here with another great tutorial from Logodesign.net. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to create a metallic looking logo. So we're going to learn how to make your logo look shiny and like it has a sheen, and I'll show you how to incorporate different types of metal into this concept. First, I'm going to walk you through the basics of lighting and how they interact with different metals and metallics, and then I'm going to show you the step-by-step -step process that I use to create this look on a flat screen. Then lastly, I'll walk you through a couple different ways that you can incorporate this look into your next logo design. Without further ado, let's jump into the tutorial. Basically what I'm going to do is use these inspiration photos below to pull out the tones and the colors uh, and the feel of each of these options. Every metallic is going to act different, so make sure you pull some inspiration photos so you can see how that metal interacts with light and the different ways that it's going to reflect off of the different things that you see um, in the photos and the different shapes that you're uh, that you're creating to make metallic. So we're going to start with this gold over here and here's my inspiration. Now I like the tones of this but I wanted to up the saturation a little bit so I pulled in this brighter yellow. Basically what I've done here is created shapes for each of these different items um, and then I did a singular background shape because I wanted to um, create kind of a shadow. So now my goal with this is not to round it out like this photo, but to make it look angular. So for our gold image, we'll start with this inspiration photo, which is just a classic gold bar. Now it's got these folded edges, which is part of why I picked this image because I needed the how the light plays off of the hard edge. This gold edge picks up a highlight of white along the edge. So that's something we're going to want to incorporate into our design. First thing I want to do is just pull some of the colors. So I'm going to grab some colors. So we're going to think of the light coming from this direction, which means the lightest images are going to be here and they're going to get progressively darker as they go to the right. My goal is to create a very angular looking design where these parts are shadowed and these parts are highlighted and catching the light. But if you have your final shape, but not everything is its own shape, you're just going to go over here to this shape builder tool and just tap on the shapes that you want to have separated. So this was a whole shape and now it's got that shape cut out of it. So you select all. Now you have each of those pieces separated. When light hits gold, it reflects lighter towards the edge. If this side was angled away from the light, it would be the darkest edge. So we're going to gradient uh, from darkest to lightest from left to right, because that's the way the light is going to hit these different sections of our logo design. So I'm going to go and make the gradient a little more subtle until it starts to do what I'd like it to do. Now, if you zoom out, you can kind of see how it gives it a little bit more dimension, but I'm going to actually come back here and make these pieces darker. Good way to tell is to zoom out, see if you're getting the effect you want. Now I'm going to separate out these pieces again. So I'm just going to put a line in the center. I'm going to select all, go back to my shape builder tool and separate these out. What we're doing here is we're sectioning off and making it as if this is coming towards us from the center back. My goal is to make it look like a pyramid, but from the top view. Once you're satisfied with where the light is hitting and how your shades are coming out, you want to begin to use a gradient. So it's always good practice to copy and paste your work so that you don't lose the work that you've done before. So I'm just gonna add that piece over there, keep working on this one. Now select the gradient tool. And we're going to use the freeform gradient just because I want to have a little bit more of a natural and less of a manufactured look on this piece. So I'm going to start with this. I'd like each of the angles to have a rounded effect. So I'm going to click the freeform gradient. And then when you tap on your shape, it's going to give you dots. I'm going to take that same color that I've used, but I'm going to go in here and I'm going to add a lighter version, maybe even a white to this one. And I'm going to pull it down so it has a little bit more of a sheen to it. And that's going to give me the look I want over the entire thing. Now, each piece that I move in farther away from the light is going to be uh, less bright. And then there's my, I might even go in and add a shadowed version on each of these darker pieces as well. Since my lighting is coming from this direction, on these edge pieces, I'm going to be adding more light like it's catching this front. So same method, but I'm going to move my center dots, my gradient dots. So same idea here, but instead of having 
the lighter color in the middle. I put the lighter color towards the upper middle because I want it to kind of sort of be catching that light, but then it's going to be faded off as it, as it gets farther away from the light. Same deal here because the light is hitting so harshly here, it's going to cast a darker shadow here, which means it might lighten up towards the tail. Don't be afraid to pull other colors and also edit the colors that you're creating. So we're gonna work from here and I wanna add some white lines on each of these edges, maybe all of them, we'll see. I mostly want it on the edges where the design is popping forward. So this is coming forward, this is going away, this is coming forward. So I want to create. You can kind of decide as you're looking at it whether or not it needs to be geometric or if you want to come in with some natural strokes or some natural lines. I really think this one needs to stay geometric, so I'm gonna leave it as is. You can see how adding the white highlight just kind of puts the final touch on, kind of confirming in your mind that this is a 3D logo that is coming towards you and these parts are the ones that are getting highlighted. You'll notice it's subtle changes like that that really help a design to pop. Now you can play with your thickness on these lines. If you want it to be a little bit more cartoon or structured, you can, you can do that. But I really, honestly, I like them really thin for this design. And there you have it. There is a logo that was a basic shape that we just using gradients, some lighting tricks turned into a metallic logo. Next, we have this silver design. So I really liked the silver in this and how it had some color in it because normally silver is pretty much gray and a gradient and that's fine. But I liked how it had some pinks and some teals and some blues. Um, so I thought it'd be fun to kind of bring that in and make maybe an iridescent type silver. It's important to decide before you dive into creating a metallic where your light source is, like we talked about with the gold one, um, but also which elements are separated from one another. If you're going for a realistic look, obviously you couldn't have a shape like this that had bevels, um, picture like the Nissan logo or a lot of car logos. Um, they're connected, but they're, they're not impossible shapes. So for this design, if we were to bevel it, we might have highlights down the middle here and then it might curve to this circle, or this could just be its own piece with the A embedded inside of it. It's really up to you, your design skills and what you want to accomplish with your design. For this one, I'm gonna start with a gradient just so I can get kind of a feel for what I want to accomplish here. And I'm gonna again use the free form. And I'm going to also go in here into my Pathfinder and I'm gonna make this all one shape because I don't want it to be separated. We're gonna go into our free form gradient once again. I know I want the highlight of this logo to be in the A. So I'm gonna make sure that I'm accomplishing that. You can add different points around here, which will help you understand where the light is and kind of see from a distance where things are going. Then I know I want this center to look like it's bowing out. I'm adding a couple extra points here because I know I want to come in here with different colors eventually. So I'm kind of just prepping my artboard here. I know I want the outside circle to remain dark so that the A kind of comes out from that circle. Now it's up to you if you want to add hard lines in here. Um, that kind of needs to be a part of your planning process as you're kind of uncovering what this metallic logo is going to look like if it were real. The goal really always is to make it look as uh, real as possible if you're able to, um, unless you're going for something more animated. To pull color from an image, you simply double tap on one of those dots you created, click the color picker and go in there and grab your color. All right, once you have kind of the basic colors that you want in the gradient, I'm gonna go here and I'm going to add some highlights using the shape tool. So if my, my light is coming from up above, which is what I've decided I would like to do, um, then I would have some reflection on the top, um, but this is also going to be beveled. Um, so with a bevel, you've got shadows and curves and edges that are not already here in the shape. So for my top bevel, I'll have just from like here to here-ish, and I'm going to choose from uniform to faded. So I'd like it to uh, kind of taper off at the ends here. 
think I'm going to create an entire outline. So I'm going to copy and paste my image, I'm going to take away the fill and add a stroke. And I'm going to revert back to all gray. That gives me a better idea of what's happening with your eye when you look at this image. you're going to see and uh, start to notice in your life how you are now picking up these different designs and the way that light is hitting different metallics. You'll start to notice the more you study uh, images like these and real metallics in your life. For our rose gold one, rose gold is a fun color because it's kind of pink, but kind of gold and kind of in between. And it's got a lot of different shades. So make sure you choose an image that you are able to mimic and kind of pick the image that you want to uh, copy. For this one, I'd love how the watch uh, kind of has this uh, center point where the line, where the light goes out in a triangle here. So I'm going to try and mimic that in our design here as well. So same tool, your free form gradient. I don't want an outline on this because I actually want to have a really simple design. So for this design, I am pulling from the colors in the center of the watch, assuming that the light is coming from a far off distance um, so that it's casting kind of this horizontal line through each of these letters. I think that will add a super nice touch to this design. So set up my lighting first with some gradients. Depends on the layout of your image, but sometimes you can select your image and actually collect the same colors. There, it didn't work super well. As you can see, it only worked in a couple of them. So you have to go through here and manually add each of these highlights to these images. For now, I like it this way and I'm going to tweak it as we go. Now, if you zoom in real close here, you can actually see there's layers. So you've got a dark edge, you've got this middle edge with a highlight on it. That's not a super strong highlight. Then you have this other edge that has a very strong highlight and then you have the dark edge. So study pieces of your materials like that and determine, okay, what am I pulling? How am I going to have this interact with the light? And what are the different elements of these letters that will help me to determine what kind of gradients to use in my logo. I'm gonna use my eyedropper to pull one of these darker colors. I really like this reddish tone, um, but I want it a little bit more pink. Now the thing with rose gold, you have to be careful not to make it too pink because uh, it's not necessarily a feminine color. So I'm gonna pull that color. I'm gonna copy that color code. When I go to select my outline color, I will paste that in there. And then you can use this tool to create a more natural effect so you don't get a total clean line. If you zoom in here, you can see the difference. Let's expand on that. So you can see that. And I actually, I kind of like that. Around the edges here, I don't want an outline around the entire edge. So I'm gonna take that away. I'm gonna copy and paste that outline, take away the fill and add the outline on top of it. Then when I go in and actually edit for the lighting, which the lighting direction, like I said, is coming from the, the front of the screen in, in towards the logo, um, I'm going to trim out the pieces that I don't love. Now, something that can be done on these logos as well as drop shadows, those are very subtle ways to raise the image off the page and make it a little more 3D. So I'll show you how that looks here. You can even pull in a little bit of that red peach color as the background instead of black to give it a subtle look. And there you have a rose gold logo. Now for our final option, copper. This is one of the recent logo designs I created for a course of mine on branding. And I'm very excited with how it came out. And I thought it would look super cool as a copper design. So I have this really cool image, which I found from unsplash.com, which if you're looking for images, make sure you're searching there because they are all free. Um, I'm gonna pull this very orange bronze copper color and we're gonna dive in with our gradients freeform once again. I want this logo to be a little bit harder, so I'm actually going to leave them as separate images instead of using our Pathfinder to group them all, like we did with our very first, or with our silver logo. So I'm going to make sure all of these are ungrouped and ready to work on. So for this design, since it is a circular design, I want to use the radial gradient. So we're gonna pull up our gradient tab by double clicking on the gradient tool. We can easily go in here and edit that gradient. Now, because these are petals, I'd like them to be lighter on the edge and darker towards the center. So we're going to actually add three different points in here and add a really rich dark brown in here. 
Now, as much fun as it would be to just copy paste this design into each petal, it doesn't work that way, especially if your light is coming from a specific source. So let's say our lighting is coming from here. And see, that's what we get when we just go and select the gradients and use the color dropper tool and grab them in. It just ends up looking really wonky. So you'll want to go in, you can do that, but then you'll want to go in and actually move around the gradient until it fits with the lighting that you've decided. All right, once we have our lighting all situated, we want to now go in and actually arrange these in a way that is correct and where they're all layered behind each other. So do that as much as you can. And there will be one we need to actually chip off. So now we could just do this forever because it's just gonna keep putting that. So we're gonna go to this one and we're going to use our scissor tool, cut around the edges, delete that extra piece, and then make sure it fits where it's supposed to in this gradient. Make any final adjustments needed. Give yourself a bit to look at it. See if it's like you like it. You can also add an outline to this one. It's totally up to you at this point, but you can add a gradient outline, which I think is cool and kind of gives a good effect. Um, without doing a whole lot of work, which is nice. Um, you can also do where you copy paste and have the outlines and add maybe a darker outline in the middle here and no outline on the outside. It's really up to you and what your designer eye wants to see. All right, guys, that is a basic tutorial on how to turn your logos into metallic logos. If you want to get more detailed, feel free to mess with textures and different uh, hand-drawn uh, highlights and elements. And if it's going to reflect off of glass or have some sort of color in it, feel free to get creative. Uh, enjoy and I hope this tutorial was helpful for you. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial and I hope you learned a lot and I hope you're able to incorporate this look into your next logo design. Remember for all your logo design needs to visit logodesign.net for more great tutorials just like this one that show you how to take your logos to the next level. Make sure you leave a comment below letting us know how this technique worked for you. Until next time, I'm Lila Higgins and I'll see you next time.